Hello, and welcome back to the Skyrim Archaeological Survey. I am joined, as always, by the adventurous Liv. Hello, Liv. Hello. Hello, and today we are continuing our little rabbit hole, which it turns out is likely going to take another two episodes after this as well, um, <laughs> examining the, the contemporaneous uh, mortuary customs of Skyrim. Uh, the, the, the previous episode or previous survey we conducted at Hanvir's Rest raised some interesting questions about the relationship between uh, ancient Nord traditions and current traditions in Skyrim, uh, as Hanvir's Rest arguably is possibly bridging the two. Or we came, we came, came up with a theory that maybe it was a, mm -hmm. a latter-day ancient Nord cemetery. And uh, today we're going to be looking at the cemeteries in Falkreath and Windhelm, respectively. And here we are in Falkreath. But before we before we we crack on, do you want to show off the cost yeah, your costume that you've uh, carefully chosen for today's survey? Yes. Because obviously, if you're in first person, we don't get to see it, do we? So, Ooh. is that you? Oh no, that's you. There you go. <laughs> that that's me. The the weird, the one-eyed. Uh... Dark Elf is me. One eyed. Oh. Yes. I didn't realize you had one eye. Oh. Uh, I'm wearing my blades armor today, uh, though I never wear a helmet if it's not a cowl. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there we go with a fancy little crown to that. I see. Very nice. Very nice. And Very I saw nice. a dragon nearby, so the bow is ready. <laughs> So, um, Falkreath is uh, is one of those places in Skyrim that uh, I don't often find myself hanging round in. I don't know about you. It's uh, rather gloomy. Yeah, it is a wee bit gloomy. Though I do appreciate that they have taken that morbid little town thing and just went with it. No, I agree. I agree. And well, in my most recent playthrough in Skyrim, I was uh, attacked here by some uh, cultists. Um, who want, I think they wanted me to fight vampires. It's it was a bit. It was all a bit weird. Um, but uh, something that I haven't done is I have never visited the cemetery. And it's interesting here that the cemetery is located where it is. In so much as what is this building to the right here? Uh, this is the shrine to RK. Uh huh. And technically, their hall of the dead. Though it's mostly the house of the priest. Interesting, interesting. So, and well, this is something that 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 this our preliminary research has reminded us of is that uh, all the major settlements in Skyrim have a house of the dead next mm -hmm. to or close to the cemetery. Sometimes as part of it seems preliminary mortuary customs, and other times mm -hmm. um, as a necessity, as we'll see in Dwindhelm. Uh, RK, incidentally, uh, for, for folks who don't uh, uh, currently remember, uh, is the god of cycle uh, of the cycle of birth and death. Uh, is a major divinity um, in the of the uh, uh, and main member of the nine divines, um, and is quite an appropriate god to be represented in a little shrine outside the hall, the house, mm -hmm. uh, hall of the dead here. Um, if we go if we go into the house, what 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 do they have inside? The, the whole uh, here. Well, actually, I suppose, first of all, what's on those banners there? Uh, it's the symbol of RK. Oh, I see. Okay. A bit worn and torn. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I see. You wield Azura so, Falkreath, really, it, it's fitting in with that whole sort of misty, slightly. You get the sense that it probably smells a bit moldy around here, don't you? Yes. It's probably going to have a thick, thick uh, atmosphere. And this is the house of the. Now, is it is it a is it a, is it a priest looking after the cemetery, or is it, or is it a just a local person? It's the priest, and he has an assistant who is mainly in charge of the cemetery, while the priest tends to the shrine. Interesting. Okay. And this this then this is very much as you say this is a house. This isn't. It, yes. may, it may well act as the hall of the dead briefly. Maybe they, they do they... have a bench, <laughs> and they have a shrine. <laughs> So they can lay, they can lay the dead person on the bench in front of the little shrine here. Um, maybe they could lay the dead person on the bed. I mean, <laughs> but it, this is this is much more of a I suppose um, what's the word uh, a rural rural sort of setup mm -hmm. uh, compared to other places. 
Um, it's it's interesting as well that the uh, that the priest of RK um, appears to be quite fastidious. This is quite a neatly kept place. Yes. And I wonder if that that translates out to the graveyard as well. I mean, I'm not sure. Is it is there much else to see in here? Do you think, or is this just a fairly no. standard home? No, it's a fairly standard home. I see. Uh, you can can find a book book of Adrian Tidra. Uh huh. Here, if you're interested in that. Okay. But other than that, it's it's a house with uh -huh. some eggs and a shrine. And someone who's sort of gently studying gods and demons and things like that. Yes. Um, okay, fair enough. I mean, it's quite it's pleasant. You know, pleasant enough, I suppose. He's quite pleasant too. Yeah, plenty of garlic on the wall as well. Um, and so, so, the, so the cemetery, interestingly, doesn't have direct access. There's a, there is a wall separating the uh, the entrance and mm -hmm. the cemetery directly. Uh, but but also at the same time, the the wall does not encompass the entire cemetery. This is much more. Um, uh, a bit more piecemeal. Well, also you get the impression that this that this this cemetery has been uh, been around for a good while. These trees probably mm -hmm. have uh, been growing in amongst the uh, the dead for a long time. Can, is there any particular um, what's the word um, uh, orientation to the graveyard? Do they do they bury their dead facing in a particular direction? Can we see? Um, they seem to have fairly equal distance from each other's. Mm. I would assume that they are buried... Let's see, there is... North-South-ish? Right on this side. Mm -hmm. And writing on that side. So that tells us nothing. <laughs> but I would assume that people are buried towards the temple. Yeah, okay, okay. Most of the grave seems to be curved oh, in I that see. direction. They are, so they're all facing the shrine of RK. Um, that is interesting, actually. So they curve following the, um, well, essentially almost following the pathway as well. So mm -hmm. be... Now, I wonder, so there are there there a few possible um, a few possibilities here. So one of them might be that all the graveyard, all the gravestones are positioned such that they are easily visible from the path. This is actually a really good angle to see that curve, I suppose. Here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, or, I, or I quite like your idea that the, they are buried facing the uh, the shrine, and actually in a very um, medieval way. This idea of of, mm -hmm. of having a physical uh, direction and a presence looking in a certain direction um, yeah. is reminiscent of that. Um, there's also another possibility here, and that is that this is in a, a slight oversight by the game designers, in mm -hmm. so much as most most graveyards have they pick an orientation and they follow it, don't they? It's, it's uh, yeah. especially if there are gravestones like this. Um, what? But how, how? How does this? How does this feel to you, as it were, as an arch as an archaeologist looking at this? I mean, does this feel authentic, or does it feel? Yeah, do you have to do a little bit of mental gymnastics to make it actually work as a grave graveyard? No, I think it feels rather... It feels a bit abandoned. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it feels authentic. Okay, okay. Uh, maybe the, there's a lack of variation in gravestones. Mm -hmm. uh, that you usually... Usually you see some kind of... Well, it's interesting because there doesn't seem to be much in the way of social hierarchy reflected in the no. steps, does there? There's nothing that's bigger, nothing really. Well, a couple, a couple are smaller, I suppose. But there's no, there's no particularly, there's no focus for the graveyard. Um, maybe what we're seeing is a is a slightly um, uh, egalitarian okay. graveyard, maybe. Yeah, everyone's equal in death, kind of thing. Yeah, possibly, possibly. I suppose it. Um, Let's see. Uh, blah, 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 blah. There is the one thing that's a bit different uh, with this than the others. Mm -hmm. If we head down here, the graves continue on the back of the Hall of the Dead. Yeah. And over here, we have the same kind of graves that we had uh, in Hemp Rest. 
Now, interestingly, I was, read this, uh, I was just quickly reading about Falkreath, and it says here, mm -hmm. it is famous for a large graveyard in which many Nords, both combatants and non-combatants, are buried. Yes. So are we seeing here, then, combatant graves? Potentially. Akin to Hamvir's rest. And the other on the other side of the hall are... Because, I don't know, I, I'm going to guess most people don't die in battle. So hopefully, <laughs> unless there's been a yeah a, a huge uh, conflict recently, um, well not even recently ago, a little while ago. So so maybe all of these are citizens, mm -hmm. and the and the and the ones that are slightly ship shaped, uh, with the with the uh, the painted um, stones akin to Hambia's rest are the combatants possibly. I think that's reasonable. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, the, it's the only difference I can make out in the whole graveyard. Yeah. And it still follows the rotation that everything points towards the Hall of the Dead. Mm. Mm. Even when you come around on the back. Yeah. Um, according to, uh, to, again, to the wiki, interestingly, the graveyard of Falkreath contains many famous Nords who requested to be buried in Falkreath next to the other honoured dead of past battles. Since they were constantly living alongside the dead, the people of Falkreath gave many of their shops and other buildings names related to death. Yes. As told by the residents, Falkreath was the place of many battles in the past, being the main reason for the large graveyards. So, okay, so maybe quite a few of these people are, are, are competent. But I, 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 it's still interesting, though, the, the, the differentiation between these... Um, uh, There's, it could be that these uh, are older graves. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that this is an older uh, burial pra practitions uh, burial, yeah. rather, and uh, the more modern looking uh, gravestones are uh, a newer practice. Could be, and uh, well, I suppose what we could be seeing here then is actually, I suppose, what we were after when we set out um, on this survey, and that is a bit of a transitional graveyard. We mm -hmm. have both both practices, a modern practice and an ancient represented in the same place. Hmm. Is, there, is there anything beyond the wall, you know, beyond the, the older graves uh, here? I mean, what, what what's over there? Is that is that outside Falkreath, that way? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you do come across... Oh, nightshade there. Interesting. Yes. Yep. And if you just pop off a few steps down here, you find the Dark Brotherhood. Ah. Uh, do you know, um, I've never found them. <laughs> <laughs> I've, thank you. you you've, just, you've, just, uh, you've just sold something for me. Um, for some reason, I've never come across them in the game. Um yep. Uh, well, I'm their leader, so I found them. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, 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 well done. Well done. Congratulations. Um, okay. Dark Brotherhood. And, and is there, uh, in your, you know, since you are the leader of the gang, um, do you know if there's any connection between them and Falkreath and, and, and this history of, of more, you know, this morbid history? Uh, well, uh, the Dark Brotherhood generally uh, can be represented. Uh, represented? in uh, Skyrim in the quote-unquote creepier parts of the country. Uh -huh. uh, Falkreath is rather benign, but this was uh, a hideout since the first, I think the first one got sacked and they escaped here. And then this one, well, if anyone has played the, the game, you know what happens to this one and then you move to another one. So, 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 what happened to my voice there? So, um, so you think then that maybe the the Brotherhood is drawn to this place in the same way that other people are drawn to be buried here? This is a, this is the, the association is with death and is with the, the honoured dead. And yes. it's, it's a handy place for the Brotherhood to hand, uh, hang out. Um, okay, okay, interesting. Uh, is, what, what's over to the north then of the building? Is it more of the same? To the north. So just ahead of us there? Yeah, that's to the east. 
Um, it's the town. Uh, if we head up here, uh, we have an old ruin up in the mountain. I think you can see it from here, mm -hmm. uh, which you can access through uh, through through a few passes okay. uh, that overlooks the city. But then you just come straight into the town from the graveyard. Right. Well, interestingly, um, so this, I mean, this is this is not dissimilar to uh, to um, to other aspect, yeah, other uh, old Nor Norse tombs on mountain sides overlooking nearby settlements. Um, but uh, d d d I guess that's going to be an interesting one to see if there's a relationship between that tomb and Folkreef at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, okay, that's interesting. And uh, yeah, okay. Well, I, I guess I guess we have seen then. We have seen now yes. a modern uh, or contemporary graveyard. How um, how do you think people are actually interacting with it? In so much as if this this place is famous for a large great large graveyard and and um, and associated uh, sort of cult culture and customs. Do you think the people here are a bit morbid in themselves, or or is it actually just well? Sort of, uh... Having talked to a few of the residents, mm -hmm. uh, they seem to either be brought, have, uh, you know, developed that kind of liking to the morbid and okay. just accepted that they live in a city, in a town that is mostly famous because of their dead. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you also have uh, a few that are just like, yes, I live here. It's always raining. Please don't <laughs> talk to me about the graveyard. <laughs> we are more than a graveyard. Interesting, interesting. But uh, but nonetheless, I suppose for the re for the rest of Skyrim, Falkreath will be a a place of of uh, of, of cemetery of a, of a graveyard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, shall we uh, Yeah, contrast this with Windhelm then? Because um, Windhelm, I popped over to Windhelm yesterday on my on my Nintendo Switch, and um, uh, it was similar, but also crucially different. And I think this is why it's going to be worthwhile visiting some of the other graveyards as well in the next uh, couple of... I mean, I mean, it may well be that we can fit in, the, in another four in the next video, but I think today we're just going to be doing the two. Um, God, have you lost? Sick. Have you lost your way? Yes, I lost my way. Let's see. Dawn Star. East, east. East, east, east. East, east. east. There's, there's solitude. Feather, feather. That's it. The feather. The, the. <laughs> God, my sense of direction is totally lost. There's solitude. There's Morthal. Right. So you want to go east. East. To the right, to the right. <laughs> oh, that's further, the left. further. <laughs> no, that's left. <laughs> Fuck me, I'm just. I'm. It's Friday. There, okay, there, it's look, Friday. look, there, there, there you go. <laughs> oh, that's Windhelm. Oh, uh, oh, was it? it there's there's uh, Winterhold. Where's Winterhold? There Are we you? go. There we no, go. No, 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 not wind, no, no, no. It's wind helm me once. So. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I found it. I'm there. I'm just such an imperial like loyalist that I intentionally go to solitude and every time I think of the capital. Apparently, apparently. Um, oh, fly me. Okay, well, let's go. <laughs> this is why I don't use maps. <laughs> Because I, I, I genuinely was like, am I getting crazy? I'm pretty sure it's over there somewhere. So, uh, Windhelm is in a so-so state. Uh-huh. Because I sacked it. You sacked it? What did you do to it? Well, you know, I killed a lot of people. Blimey, okay. Well, um, well it, to be okay. fair, it, it, it's, it's... Oh. Okay, dead person. What have you been doing here? I've been waging a war, okay? <laughs> uh, a war on what? On the undead? Or 
on the north. They didn't like me, so oh. I joined Imperials. Oh, I see. I see you're one of those. Okay, fair enough. Um, well, here we are anyway, in the in the cemetery, and the cemetery here is is. Uh, it, to my mind, very quite interesting in so much as it, it mm -hmm. feels like a cemetery born out of uh, overcrowding. Yes. Uh, this above ground in particular looks very similar to the sort of thing you see sometimes in parts of London, um, maybe bits of New York as well. Basically anywhere where they've had lots of, t also Paris, you know, people dying mm -hmm. and people then lo lo losing or running out of um, places to actually put them. Uh, and eventually... Uh, relying on more abstract ways of memorializing the dead. So we have mm. these walls around the edge of the cemetery, which are seemingly walls of mem remembrance. You can place a candle um, for the dead instead of actually having a, a graveyard there. Um, just out of interest, because uh, I don't recognize the blood there. Is, is that blood because of you, or...? No, I think that's the beast. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, that's right. Yes, there's a serial killer, isn't there, I think? Yes. Yes, okay, fair enough. Very Jack the Ripper. <laughs> um, but uh, but this yeah, this graveyard has its own uh, character once again, in the same way the Folk Reef um, had a series of of very similar gravestones. Uh, this place actually has a little bit more character towards it, and I wonder, mm -hmm. if, therefore, actually, maybe the, what this graveyard highlights is that actually Folk Reef is deliberately. Um, uh, repetitive in terms of how the graves look. Maybe it is actually a, a relatively egalitarian place. If you want to be buried here, yes. you'll be buried like this, essentially. Whereas here, you have I... people with much more, much grander individualized monuments on this, don't you? Yeah, I also think it can be a representation of the difference between rural burial and a city burial. Oh, uh, yeah? Uh, mm -hmm. A yeah. city burial is always more well, you have a lot more people to contend with when it comes to the burial, uh, do you, and do you, hence. Do you, do you mean do you mean for attention, or do you mean in terms of um, space? Both. Oh, okay. Uh, both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there are, like, especially in a place like Windhelm, where we also have. Uh, yes, yes, lady, stop talking to me. Um, where we have such a strained political. Uh, system. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. I mean, the this civil war hasn't been going on long, but Solitude and Windhelm has been feuding over the central power for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and hence I feel like the graveyards often reflect like the mood and the culture of the city. And this is a city that have wanted to prove itself for a long time. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And yeah, when you arrive, it doesn't take long for you to essentially be challenged with, you know, whose side are you on, Mister or Mrs. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and uh, but that said, though, it feels as though as though the grave, the graveyard here. Uh, well, actually, it, yeah, obviously, it's got that sort of again that that urban kind of sense, but also it feels like something that could be very much at home, also in a slightly uh, hyper realistic sort of setting. Uh, in terms of it, its its density of population, such as, mm -hmm. for example, um, uh, Gormenghast, this kind of thing, it's got that. It's got a very. Uh, it, it's dripping with um, uh, with with a with a sense a sense of uh, d tradition and structure mm -hmm. and form over these these over the, how the, this this graveyard is managed. Um, but also interestingly, no, doesn't seem to be much in the way of named uh, no. graves. So even though you've got um, all of these niches for candles, no names. I would also say that I think this feels less tended to. Yeah. Than folk grief. Yeah. yeah. Well, folk grief was neat. Yeah. Uh, I think, well, neat, and I suppose actually what what initially you were calling, or what you identified as being slightly abandoned looking, maybe that was just yeah. because it's it's in a it's in a hollow. It's got lots of nature growing in it. Yeah. Uh, this, by yeah. by comparison, feels relatively dead, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Mm. And yet, also untended, but also m more nightshade. I think your uh, your theory yes. about the uh, flower growing from the soil that has been soaked in the blood of the dead uh, holds water. Um, mm -hmm. 
You should, you should, you should write a paper on that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that's my new master. <laughs> um, well, the, also this particular site, given that Falkreath, as we've learned, uh, is a place where people from across the province want to be laid to rest. Um, this place uh, presumably doesn't have as much help in terms of upkeep, either through donations or through people visiting it. Because um, yeah. uh, there's, there's really only one person running the place, isn't there? I think she's in, the, in Windhelm's Hall of the Dead. I think so too, if she's alive. Oh, you didn't kill her, did you? I don't know. It's very hard to say who I've <laughs> killed and who I've not killed at this point. I mean, dark elves, honestly. Um, well, if she's here, hopefully she, you know, hopefully you know, she's not going to be scared of you or something. Um, and her name is uh, Hel Helgerd. Uh, she is a, uh, I think she must be a priestess of R.K. Because uh, down here in this in this catacomb there is um, uh, a shrine to R.K. here as well, and something that I that I find interesting about this is that this looks very much like a well lit hum, human human occupied version of an old Norse tomb or the, the the ancient Nord tombs that we've been looking at in the other surveys. This is essentially the same. Uh, the same structure as those tombs, just with yes. no no booby traps. Interestingly, so far I'm so. always nervous. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 like I say, I was, I was here last night. There are, there aren't any booby oh, booby traps here. And what's interesting about that then is that uh, it leads me to wonder whether this is also a form of of uh, crossover in terms of the. The, the mortuary rituals um, and the use of space because we've we've already identified the other uh, ancient Nord uh, burial sites and places that look like this with these particular forms of catacombs and burials put in place. Um, in some areas are uh, when in this way, in some parts of those particular tombs are specifically formed with the notion of creating Draugr who will mm -hmm. tend to the tomb. Um, uh, for a while, and uh, and essentially build up a sort of sh series of shifts looking after the place. It's a great in-game mechanism for describe uh, for describing and explaining how and why all the sconces and candles are lit. Um, mm -hmm. But here, it's not necessary because we have. No. Or, sorry, we would have had if you if you hadn't. No, she's her. outside. Oh, she's think... outside. Oh, okay, cool. Um, we have uh, Helga. And j what's interesting though is that not only is she clearly living here, and and also th there are some parallels with some of the the inferred living quarters for the ancient Nord priests and dragon priests in the um, some of the other tombs we've looked at. Um, but also she's specifically here because uh, the, the, this place is required because of its uh, weather and its geography. Mm -hmm. um, so she uh, will point out to you that she's busy, um, but also that that people are laid down here in the in the in the cool of the of the catacombs, while they wait for the ground to thaw outside. So in order to so so in other words, um, uh, in this con contemporary mortuary system, burial is is nonetheless uh, the the preferred mode of of dis mm -hmm. disposal of the dead. So even though they have this place that it looks like. Uh, one of the ancient Nord uh, catacombs. They're not using it in the same way as the ancient Nords were. Um, do you think, though, that this must have been an ancient Nord catacomb at some point? I think so. I mean, it's identical. Yeah. To mm. one of those. Yeah. I mean, even the carvings on the walls. Everything is identical. Yeah. Well, carving on the walls, but also actually interestingly, um, it, it, just above the shrine to RK and even. Uh, some, in some other places that you can see here, you can see where brickwork has been used to fill in some of the gaps. Mm -hmm. So maybe that this is a, a catacomb that, that had fallen into disrepair um, beneath the city, or maybe when the city yeah. was founded, they decided to build it in and and uh, and um, what's the word? Uh, assimilate this this space into their their new community. Um, but but again, uh, we have a clear a clear contemporary uh, belief that burial in the ground is preferential um, and so, or at the very least seemingly burial 
with a combination of um, of uh, memorials on the wall outside. This idea of having the dead, storing the dead beneath the ground, is mm -hmm. uh, is seemingly uh, still distinct to the ancient norms, I guess. And we also have a common practice with the, the priests of Arcade living in their temples. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, and presumably, um, presumably, the dragon priests wouldn't have shared space with priests of Arcade. No, we no. We don't see any evidence of that um, hitherto. So that's this is kind of interesting, and again, actually, uh, uh, this is a quite a nice theme for these two cemeteries in this video is this idea of of transition. So in Falkreath we have a couple of of possibly latter day ancient Nord burials uh, reflecting Hamvir's rest somewhat, and here we have a catacomb that has been uh, repurposed. Repurposed? Yeah. Great minds think alike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, repurposed, and um, and and I think quite successfully. It also it's interesting, isn't it? How it just, it feels different down here, with the, you know, because it's, it's well lit. It's not got sort of uh, um, fog and um, Draugr. uh, Draugr, yeah, lumbering about. Uh, and I suppose that that does raise a key question, because uh, even though they have the niches here, for example, for the for the uh, for the booby traps, none of them are actually mm -hmm. uh, being set off. Um, but it does raise the question, what is the difference between a space like this and an ancient Nord tomb now, in terms of its capacity to produce Draugr? Um, do you think there's something fundamentally different in terms of maybe the magical context of these places? I doubt it. I think it's more a, a difference of practice. Mm. I mean, Draugr seem to be willfully created. So it seems, yeah, in the previous surveys, definitely. Hmm. So I assume that if if it fitted with our case uh, beliefs, which it don't, with the whole cycle of rebirth and living and like yeah, the cycle of life and birth and death. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I I don't see our case being too keen on his priest going. Ha! Huh, I need servants. Let's make undead. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Now, interestingly, um, uh, if specifically the Draugr of Skyrim are described as as having once served the dragon priests, mm -hmm. so so yeah, I think I think you're right in that sense. The Draugr are connected to that ancient religion, whereas uh, RK clearly has a much more uh, calm. Yeah, there's a little bit of fog actually down here, um, yeah. but it, but it's a much calmer atmosphere. Um, uh, it is. Yeah. And I also think that that could be because the space is used. Yeah, yeah, it hasn't been abandoned. It's not an abandoned space, it's not a dead space mm. that you're reawakening, so to speak, when you intrude. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. This is a place where you're supposed to be. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's, uh, that's true. And uh, well, and and yeah, actually, actually, that is crucial, isn't it? In so much as you're not having to, you haven't had to trick anyone to get in here. You, you're allowed no. in, and that also seems to be a main uh, a feature of houses of the dead, is that people can come in. Um, now, I seem to recall in solitude, it's a bit complicated in terms of how the how the the burial practices relate to uh, to not so much nine but eight divines, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There's a bit of an issue going on there, so maybe that's something to to consider for the next survey. Yes. Um, but this has been a this has been so far, I think, a worthwhile uh, rabbit hole. A nice contrast to the ancient Nord tombs we've been looking Absolutely. at. Absolutely. Look here, she is. She's safe. Oh well, that's a relief. That's good. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm happy that she's okay because. Uh, yeah, she's harmless. <laughs> um, and uh, and and yeah. And so so I suppose next time shall we look at uh, solitude and white run? Do you think? Mhm. Mm okay, and then uh, and then I think there are a couple more after that we want to look at as well. We might consider including putting four into the next survey actually, uh, just to get them out of the way, so it's not yeah. like three episodes. Yeah. So we can get back to. Regular scheduling. Yeah, so so ne maybe next time it'll be a, maybe a, you know forty-five minute, an hour long episode or something. But, but this mm -hmm. has been fun. Um, 
I suppose, folks, uh, again, comments below. What do you think about this? And also, actually, crucially, if sorry, if you just look down to the right a little bit, we also have um, uh, uh, lanterns um, on graves here as well. So not just mm -hmm. candles in niches. We also have lanterns. So again, light um, seems to be a an aspect of of, uh, of what's going on here as well. Light in the in the cold winter, maybe. Yes. I um, also noticed that a few of the graves have stones put on them. Uh, it's almost like a like a memorial sort of ziggurat. Yeah. Uh, that you sometimes find on mountain tops things like that. Yeah. So people visit and the stone is placed somehow. Like oh. Interesting. Now is that a stone or is that a um? Or is that a carved sort of um, pediment? pediment? No, it sort of seems pediment? like a stone. Okay. It's only on a few of them. I wonder, I, I wonder if the, these sorts of features, if any of these features could be read similarly to what we were talking about last time in terms of how in, uh, you know, Victorian and Georgian graveyard traditions there is a graveyard language. Because mm -hmm. uh, actually, that, I suppose, just before we finish, actually, that is something that we haven't addressed here, is here, c contrary to Falkreath, there is differentiation between the graves. Yes. Um, and presumably that's going to reflect social status, isn't it, I guess? It is. Yeah. I yeah. just assume it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, or either social status or, or, in a slightly more nuanced way, um, how mm -hmm. people viewed the, the recently deceased person. Yeah. Um, do you think uh, that, that that that's that's that just plays into or ties into though the um, the the fact that this is an a more urban environment? I think so. I yeah. think it becomes more important the more people who are going to view the grave. Yeah, yeah. And also as well, if this if this is one of the cities that that could be uh, vying as a yeah as capital of um, of Skyrim or certainly a, as a gateway to the to lands to the north and east. Mm -hmm. and then, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's an awful lot more going on there in terms of trade. And also, actually, it's interesting as well that this graveyard is... Uh, it's simultaneously hidden away, but also mm -hmm. connected to uh, the blacksmiths just around the corner. There's residents yeah. just off to the left from where you are now. And a direct pathway as well to the Grand, to the grand Hall off, to, off in front of us. Um, so it's... it's uh, what's the word? It's central to citizens who know their way. Yeah. But it's not easily visible if you're visiting. It's um, not a tu tu tourist cemetery. No, exactly, and that's again, and that's a, that's a good contrast to Falkreath as well. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, yes, folks, please do comment below. Anything else that, that you've spotted that we haven't spotted? Anything that, that you've thought about that we haven't thought about? Uh, we'd love to know, and uh, we will continue our survey next time with uh, uh, White Run and Solitude. Mm-hmm. Um, Thank you for watching as ever. Until next time, do take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.